This exercise was not just testing your ability to use the type tool, it also required you to design. This isn't a design course per se, but you can never learn too much about things like composition, hierarchy, and balance. So let's take a look at some example work and talk a bit about design. Here are some examples from the Maximum Arena Challenge boards. So I have two examples here. The first one that's playing with a lot of texture. We got all of our text nicely laid out. And then on the second one, we have something similar. Text nice and big up here. Very similar compositions. Those are working nice. But there is a, a, a lot of similar mistakes between these two that when you first start working with typography come up a lot. The first thing is getting a little too creative. And by that, I mean trying to imply different things within your type when it doesn't necessarily serve the design that well. What I mean by that is this designer put jump further and then they kerned out further. Or they added out the tracking there so that it's much wider because it's kind of representing the word further. And then fly higher is all compressed to make it look a little bit taller so they could scale it up even bigger. And while I understand that thinking and I can appreciate the thought and the creativity there, it makes all the text a little bit less easy to read. In addition to all of that texture that's going on, that's also making it just a little bit more difficult to read. And if we take a look at the second example, we've got something very similar happening. On the word higher, the last couple of letters have been shifted off the baseline just a little bit as if it was to say that we're jumping higher, right? Flying higher. So again, I can understand why you would want to do that, why you would think to do that, but unless it's very specifically being incorporated into the design, then a lot of times this type of typography treatment is just going to look a little bit messy. So it'd be much more effective if we cleaned up this text so it was just a nice solid block of text that's easy to read rather than trying so hard as to make the type fit the words that are actually being written in that t uh, in the font. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. First of all, I'm just going to take this orange texture and I think it's it's just competing with everything else. So I want to change the color of it. I'll do that with a color overlay. And instead of making it that bright orange, why don't we just grab something a little bit darker? Maybe not the exact color of the clouds, but something a little bit lighter right around there maybe maybe bring it down a little bit. I don't want it competing with the text too much. Clearly, that's still a dirty texture. You can see it. I'm going to leave it like that for now. And then I'm going to grab this text. And actually, I'm going to grab all of the text. And it's kind of blending into the background a little bit because the designer chose a color that was very similar to this color right here. And instead, I'd rather see something that's the color of the logo. So that sample is right about there. And I'm going to do this with the color, color overlay as well. So I'm just going to make it all that same color. Click OK. And then drag this um, texture out of it so it's not included in that. So put that below the group. But it's definitely still blending into the background there. And the reason why it's white now is because of the color overlay I put on the group. Now you're seeing this little icon right here. That means that I don't have the font this designer used installed on my machine. So if I try and change it, it's going to substitute a font. It's not going to look the same anymore. But I know of a font that's pretty similar to that. So let me just change this really quickly. I'm going to change it to Futura Condensed and then probably Extra Bold or maybe just Bold. That's pretty similar. I'll click OK and there we go. It's just barely different but similar enough. And then this one is probably more of like the medium version. There we go. And there we go, just undo and redo. You can see it's very, very similar. Okay, now that I have that, I actually, I, I can get rid of this color overlay. And I'll just change the text layers directly. Oh, actually, got to change this one first. And then that is probably the bold version. Maybe the extra bold. Yeah, that's pretty close. Then we'll grab this one, Futura. Probably the medium version for that. And then finally our little disclaimer. Don't try this at home. Okay, and then change this text color on each one of these layers.
Now there's a color overlay on each one of these, so I'm going to have to get rid of those as well. I'll just turn them off. And there we go. Now we've got our white color, or our off-white color. Got the drop shadow, so it's much easier to, re easier to read. But I'm going to mess with the tracking and the kerning now. I'm going to turn this down to zero, and then maybe just scale it down until it's about the same as the top line of text, but that also needs to be set to zero. And I'll change the kerning to metrics, make sure that's all nice and lined up. And this is shifted off the baseline for some reason, so I'm going to reset these. And then just make this a nice block of text that's nice and lined up. Don't want to overthink it, just make it a clean lockup of text. There we go. Now, another issue that we see come up all the time when you're laying out any kind of object, whether it's type or not, is making it way too big. So I think that's the case with both of these examples. Uh, the text is not only too big, but it's also pushed too far to the sides. This was right up against the top part of the frame at the start, and this disclaimer is sitting right on the bottom of the frame. There's this thing called title and action safe with video, which you'll learn more about in the future, but basically it's just giving you a margin of, uh, of padding room around the outside edge of the frame. It's an old safety margin for broadcast television. We don't need to get into that right now, but it still serves a good purpose in the composition of your frame by not making things feel super tight and cramped up in the corner like this. So I would take this text in and then scale it down. Because if you were looking, let me actually just undo that. If you were looking at this full screen and I made this nice and full to fit my screen, you can see that text is just ginormous. It's huge compared to everything else on the frame. And there's no reason to have it quite so big unless we really needed some kind of a mega impact and we don't for this. So I think I'm going to just scale it down to about that size and then grab my other text layers, reposition them, maybe line them to the left here and scale them down a little bit. Again, building in that hierarchy of information, whatever's most important is what we see first. So this tagline followed by the date, which is nice, big, and bold, and then the information about the location down there. And it's all lined up with the logo right there. It's pulled in from the top left corner. It fits in well with this photo. That texture in the background is now much more uh, in the background and not taking away from the text. And then I'm just going to grab this disclaimer and bring it up, probably about there, just so it sits off the bottom of the frame. And I think this all feels a lot more balanced now compared to where we started with this. And I would do the exact same kind of thing with this. I would you know, get rid of the baseline shift, scale it down. The alignment of these uh, elements are great and the hierarchy is great. I think this is just a little bit bigger than it needs to be. And this one, believe it or not, I might say is just a tad too small. Maybe we make that 20 and just that little bit extra could help it. Otherwise, these are really great compositions. I love the coloring of both of them. Are, are, they're fitting the, the background image very well. And I think all of that texture, that gritty, grungy texture is going along with the brand really well. All right, let's jump over to Illustrator and take a look at some canoodle boards. So I've got three different boards here. This first one, board number two, and board number three. Now I think all of these are working really, really well. There are some small tweaks I would make to them, uh, but overall, all three examples are really great. I love how the logo got put down in the bottom right corner here. A lot of times you see that with a, uh, a TV channel, their network logo is going to go in the bottom corner. The hierarchy of information on this frame is great. We see right away that this is for tomorrow, not today. It is tomorrow's schedule. We've got the times very consistent, laid out on the left side, and then the shows that are corresponding to those times on the right. It's all working really, really well. And this highlight of the new episode of uh, Finkel and Einhorn works great. I see it. I, I totally instantly recognize that it's different than the other two. So I know without a doubt I've got a new episode here. One thing that I'm sure this designer had a struggle with was getting all of this text to line up. It looks like they were trying to get it to be all the same width. And while that's respectable, that's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad to see that kind of thinking. I, I'm pretty sure I would much rather see everything be a consistent size. So it looks like this one is the smallest because it's the longest title. So I would just make these two the same size as the others 
just so there's no um, confusion with like the hierarchy in the sizing or anything. These are the show titles. This is how they look. These are the show times. This is how they look. And I, otherwise, I think this is working great. Not a big deal to me that these aren't lining up on the right side. It's a great example of this board. All right, the second one is a lot of fun. I really like this playful font that this designer chose. I think it fits the brand very well. Again, we've got that hierarchy of information. Tomorrow is the first thing we see, big and bold, so no question about what the schedule is for. But new episode is directly underneath it. And I believe this designer was trying to think of a way to indicate what a new episode would look like by putting these little lines here. And while I like that design element, um, and we see it again here on the new episode, I think it's a little bit confusing because we see tomorrow new episode, but no real obvious call out as to what is a new episode. This designer even chose to make the time and the size of that show title bigger, but it's still just a little too confusing. This is only going to be up for a handful of seconds on screen, so you need to be 100% clear what the new episode is. This might make me think that everything on this schedule has a new episode because it's up above this divider. So I'd much rather see this scaled down, possibly uh, you know, right here, maybe we put these accent lines on the left side instead of the right. Or they could go over here. Maybe, maybe they incorporate up here even. Or down at the bottom. There's a lot of options that you could uh, play around with here, but I don't think that in its current state that call out is working very well. I do like the styling of the, the times versus the show titles. I think that's working great. And this part of the logo um, that they adjusted, this designer adjusted, I think is awesome. I love that playful um, adjustment to the logo. However, it's very risky. Not saying you shouldn't try it, but if that's not part of the channel's branding, then they might be a little bit upset that you added in color where there wasn't any in the brand brief. But like I said, I really like it, and there's no problem with showing that as a version to your creative director or to the client. One last thing that I want to talk about is up here, the kerning in this word. The, uh, between the O and the W and maybe the O and the M is very tight. So I would just grab that and kern it out a little bit more. So there's a, a consistent breathing room between these characters, especially since this is such a big, bold word. Um, you see it right up at the top. You want to make sure that has a consistent, really well-spaced out kerning. And I would take a look at all of the, the text in this document, obviously, but especially with that typeface to make sure it's kerned well. Great job, though. Let's take a look at the last example. This one I absolutely love, the way that the designer called out the new episode. They took a part of the brand's name and included that as the indicator as for a new episode, and I think that's brilliant. So kudos to this designer for doing that. I think the hierarchy is also great. We've got tomorrow up at the top with this playful type treatment, very fun fits the channel's brand uh, and attitude, I think. And then we've got these little dividers sectioning off the actual schedule with the shows and the times. The only thing I think it's missing is some more color. It's all very monotone right now. So maybe we take uh, this starburst in the background and, and it looks like that might be locked. So let me go into my layers and find that object right here, starburst. Don't know why I couldn't select that, but there we go, I've got it. And maybe we just make that red. So that stands out and make sure that the stroke also turns red. There we go, so we've got a new episode. That's a good call out now. Maybe we change the color of the times as well. So I'll grab those and we make those red. Now there's just a little bit of variety there. Even just that little bit, I think, adds a, uh, some, some more contrast in the colors and makes this feel like a, a little bit more poppy. It, fit, it just pops off the screen a little bit more. One other thing that all three of these designers did was included uh, PMEST for e Eastern Time. And while that's a perfectly acceptable way of doing it, and I think all three of these designers did an excellent job at laying those time indicators out, one very simple solution to the requirement of saying that all times are Eastern is by just changing this to get rid of the Eastern time and then maybe just leaving this at P because that indicates PM. So that's simplified. Drag that down over here and then just add a little note down at the bottom. Uh, that's, whoops, let me undo there. 
that says all times Eastern. And I'm going to change that so that it's not small caps. I get my character palette and maybe make it all caps. There we go. And scale it down. And you know what? Why don't we even try putting it inside of maybe brackets just to give it a little bit of a style. And we could even try and make it italic. Now this particular typeface doesn't look like it has an italic font, so I'm just going to change it to Proxima Nova, uh, and we'll do thin, and then the thin italic. So there we go, just something like this, and we could stick it down here, we could find a nice place for it, but that way you're cutting down on the amount of type that you have to have to indicate the times, and just cleaning everything up a little bit better. But again, overall, these are all great examples. Now let's jump back into Photoshop and take a look at our Coxinelle. I think that's how you say it. This designer made a logo using just the type from this font, and I think they chose some alternates for the start and the end. I think that's excellent. This N might uh, not be the greatest choice because it's separating the N from the E. It looks like a break when this, in reality, if it was written by hand, would be one continuous brush stroke. So maybe this should just be the regular N and then bring that in so it lines up nicely with the E. Just a small difference, uh, but I think that makes it look a little bit more coherent as if it was actually written by hand. But that's a great, really super elegant logo for this chocolate company. I also like the, the way that this designer modified the text box to be much wider and very cleanly justified this top section of text separately from the bottom line, the last line, only then do we sign our work, Coxinelle. Really nothing to complain about in this design. I think the hierarchy of information, the way everything is laid out is great. The only thing that I might change is dropping this down just a few pixels so it looks a little bit more centered within that frame. Otherwise, great job. This example right here is another great example. They used a different font, um, obviously, but made another very nice looking version of this company's potential logo. Now there are some issues here with the kerning. So I would just get in there and make sure that these things line up perfectly. So I'm going to go into the character palette select everything and change this to metrics and that didn't actually change anything so I'm gonna start looking for some other potential issues for why this wouldn't line up um, I'm seeing right here that the text has been stretched it's 97 percent instead of 100 and so I updated that to 100 percent you don't really want to compress your text uh, vertically or horizontally because the type is just not going to work well it's designed at the scale that it's been designed it or at least in the proportions it's been designed in for a reason so sketching or, or stretching it that way is not generally a good idea unless you're being very deliberate with that stretching now there are still some issues with the way that this is lining up where the I is and there's a little bit of separation between the I and the N and even this E I'm not exactly sure why so this might be a, a time where I have to go in and manually kern this a little bit and just using my keys actually isn't good enough it, it's a little overdoing it so I'm going to type in a custom number there and then maybe do negative five here just so that squeezes in and that looks a little bit better now now that gold foil looks a little saturated to me and I'm wondering if it's just because the text underneath it was orange and sure enough yeah that is what's going on so I think I might just turn down the saturation a little bit let's get back to our original color I'll grab the saturation and turn it down so it looks a little bit more like gold and then maybe bring it not quite so red something about there I'll copy that color and put it on this color uh, or this text layer as well there we go and now I think that just looks little, like a little bit more convincing of a gold foil texture again I like the way that this designer laid out the block of text within the frame I think that's working well the little ornaments very elegant and this is another great option finally we have this version right here which is a much different style typeface this is uh, I think a risky move because it is quite a bit more messy but you know you never know what the client is going to like so there's nothing wrong with presenting something like this overall though I think that the entire block of text everything on this side in the typography folder is a little bit too big I just scale it down maybe 10% or so something like that and shift it over and that fits a little bit more nicely than here it's taking up more room than it needs to then I want to take a look at this typeface right here I'm sure this designer looked at plenty of fonts and chose this one specifically but I don't think it's the best bet for this particular brand um, because it almost has kind of like a, a Celtic 
feel to it. It, it kind of reminds me of Lord of the Rings the, with the style of this K here and just the way that it's been written. And I don't think that's the vibe that this chocolate company would necessarily go for. So uh, I would just change this to something a little bit more um, straightforward, a, a regular serif font like we see in these other two options. And that's something that's just going to come with experience, getting a feel for what typefaces and styles of typefaces fit different types of projects. Otherwise, though, this designer did a really excellent job of the layout of this board. And that is it for episode three. We're coming up on the home stretch of Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed, so make sure you're pushing yourself as hard as you can. The more you put into this class, the more you'll get out of it. See you next time.